Hi everyone, this video covers Packet Tracer 1.3.6 Configuring SSH. This Packet Tracer assignment is a part of the Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials Version 7 Cisco Network and Academy curriculum. So in this assignment, we've got PC1 and we've got Switch1. Now they are connected directly together. However, they wouldn't necessarily have to be for um, this lab. They could just be both connected to the internet at large and have their IP address and configured um, because what we're covering is a remote connection. So for instance, if you were sitting on the beach and you wanted to log into your switch or your router, you could use one of two options to remotely log in. And that would be either through Telnet or through SSH. Both are remote connections with their pros and cons individually. Um, and we'll talk about those. And we've covered both of them previously in the intro to network. So this is a little bit of a review. So using PC1 first, we're going to Telnet into S1. So we're remotely logging into it. Now, if you remember, Telnet has its inherent difficulties or challenges, the main one being that since this is a remote connection, think about again, if you were sitting on the beach or in Starbucks trying to remote into your router or switch, you're gonna have to type in a username and password that you have previously set up locally on the switch. Now, when you use Telnet, unfortunately, that information is passed over the internet in plain text, meaning if somebody was sitting at Starbucks next to you and decided to sniff their network traffic, they could easily see exactly the username and password that you sent back and forth to the router or the switch to log in. So let's see what that looks like. So we've already got that set up on S1. So we're going to go to PC1 and go to the command prompt and we're going to type in telnet and we're going to type in the IP address for switch one which is 10.10.10.2 up there now again remember you cannot assign a IP address to a physical interface on a regular layer 2 switch but you can to the VLAN interface this allows you to be able to remote into it only all right so we're <clears throat> going to type in our password here which is all lowercase Cisco from our directions Again, it will not show you typing. So when you type C-I-S-C-O, it will not come up on the screen. And you press enter afterwards and it'll come up with the enable prompt right here um, or your <clears throat> exec mode. And you can type enable to go to privileged exec mode. And this password is also Cisco. You press enter and now you are in privileged exec mode. So from here, remember, you can save your running configurations. You can also uh, show your configurations that you currently have configured um, in depth for certain prompts and certain configurations. Um, and then you could also go to config mode with config T. So here they first want you to save your current configuration. So I'm going to type copy run start. <clears throat> you press enter twice to save that locally. And it says to show our current configurations, the note that the plain, the passwords are in plain text. So if I do show run, <clears throat> you see here my uh, console, local console pass, or sorry, my enable secret is uh, Cisco. And they actually didn't even use enable secret. They used enable password. So that means it will not store in encrypted. Same thing here for my remote login. And remember, because we just did <clears throat> line VTY 0 through 15, that means up to 16 people can log into this switch. Uh, each person that logs in is assigned a channel number. Um, because we didn't set anything except for the password and just noted people to be able to log in, it is going to use Telnet. So all this stuff is sent in plain text, even is stored in plain text on the switch. So first thing is we want to... Uh, encrypt those passwords that are stored locally. Now, again, that's still not going to solve Telnet's problem of sending the information in plain text over the internet, but it will solve the issue of if somebody were to break into your router or switch configurations, that they won't be able to just see it when they type show run. So here we want to do service password dash encryption for that. <clears throat> and then if you go back and do a do show run, remember the do command allows us to be able to type in our configuration syntax no matter where we are in our system. So I hit enter here. You now see instead of seeing the word Cisco, you actually see a random bunch of letters and numbers. So it was ran through a hash algorithm. And this is what you have in the end. But again, that still doesn't solve our problem with Telnet. So let's set up ssh ssh is actually a method of sending that information as long as you set it up beforehand just like with telnet encrypt it across the internet 
but there are a few more steps to setting that up. So first, we want to configure a domain name. So we're going to configure the domain name to netacad.pka. So our command is ip domain dash name netacad.pka. Hit enter. Next, they want us to generate some RSA keys using the 1024-bit link. These are the encryption keys that are automatically generated by the RSA algorithm. So we're going to do crypto key generate is the command. RSA. You press enter and it asks you how many bits do you want it to be. Now, by default, it's 512. So you actually have to type in 1024 here to up the encryption level. Then you press enter. And it says generating 1024-bit RSA keys. They will be non-exportable, meaning they are locally on the system. And you can't export these because, again, that would create a security risk. So next, we want to set up our username on our system. And we want to set up a local username of administrator from the directions. So we want to do username administrator. All right, make sure you spell it correctly or it won't give you credit. And then instead of a regular password, we want to do an encrypted one of secret. So we'll type secret instead of the word password here and Cisco all lowercase. What that's going to do is set up a local username of administrator and the secret is going to be or the password is going to be Cisco. It's just going to be encrypted since we use the secret syntax or option there. All right. Next, we're going to go to our VTY lines. So we'll do line VTY 04 or sorry, 015, because we want to do all of them in one fell swoop. And then we're going to remove the login, so no login and no password, Cisco, from what it was earlier. Then we're going to force it to use SSH. So we're going to do login local so that it will use the local database and we're going to force it to use SSH. So transport input SSH. All right. You see now we're at 100% for our lab. So everything should be working, but let's test it out. It says exit the Telnet session, attempt to log back in and see if that works. Because right now we're still logged in through Telnet, right? So I'm going to type exit a bunch until it says closed. Then I'm going to do Telnet. 10.10.10.2 press enter and you see it doesn't work right now we can do ssh because we ended the ability to do telnet so if you type ssh in the command prompt to see how you use it you'll see that and you can press enter without any options there it'll give you kind of the syntax that you need so it's ssh l all right our username is administrator and then our target is our IP address. So 10.10.10.2, you press enter here. You see it asks you for the password, which was Cisco. Press enter and voila, we are now back into our switch. And you can do the same things as far as show run, saving your configurations and so on. And you see all of our stuff that we had set up here, username, administrator, and the secret or password is encrypted, our IP domain name, and you see here, under the remote logins under the line VTY for 0 through 15, uh, you see login local and transport input SSH. So that is much more secure when we start sending that information over the internet. So that is a recap on how to configure a secure connection for logging in remotely to a switch or a router.